Not long after I started learning electronics, I was trying to come up with this idea of how you would make an analog sequencer. Because in the synthesizer, when you sequence notes, it's all done digitally. The, there's like a timer and it counts and whatever, and you press the note and it records that note digitally. There are analog sequencers, but they're usually just arrangements of uh, knobs that you set the VCO. Like a, each one controls the voltage going into a VCO. So I had this idea, like, what if, because they're in 8 bits, you have 128, or in 8 bytes, you have 128 bits of information that you can save, and then in the human hearing range is 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, which is just around 10 octaves, and each octave has 12 notes in it. So I figured 128, 120 notes. If I can figure out a way to get each note to line up precisely with a bit, then I can somehow save um, a sequence in an analog way. Then I started learning more about electronics, started figuring stuff out, and then today I read the patent number 3387286 that says field effect transistor memory otherwise known as random access memory. So I discovered that uh, one week after I started learning electronics I came up with the idea for um, the memory that we use in our computers, which boosted my ego a lot, but it was it was actually quite eerie. I have my old notes. <laughs> I have an old video talking about how I would do this, and it's the exact same thing. So, um, since I had thought about it quite a lot, uh, and it's kind of really interesting how they went on doing it, my idea was that you would have a you play a voltage, that voltage would activate a transistor, which would go into a capacitor. The capacitor holds the voltage level. Then the clock goes around using some sort of um, shift register. And then when it gets back to the saved voltage in the capacitor, you have another voltage going on the rear end, or the rear electrode of the capacitor releasing that voltage, having it flow through a uh, Schmidt trigger or an offhand with negative feedback and gain, and that voltage will then now be the same voltage, or you could just have that voltage go into the original oscillator, instead of having to create an oscillator for each step. But you could make an oscillator for each step, because if you had 16 steps and 16 oscillators, they're like this big. But, uh... I'm not going to show you all this little stuff. I will show it to you on uh, some big pieces of paper. But this is going to be fun. First off, we have to think about how things are written in binary. We're only going to use five bytes because we only need five. Um, we only need 26 bits of information because I'm just using the alphabet here. So the first byte, if it's a one or a zero, like you can only be one or zero. If you have a zero or one in the first byte, you can designate if it's zero or one. If you have two bytes, you can now have two plus one. So you have three. Uh, if you have three bytes, you could have four plus two plus one. So like, um, let's say five, one, so that's one, zero, so no two, one, four, zero, zero. No eights and sixteens. So that's one and four equals five. More complicated number, let's say uh, V is the 21st letter of the alphabet. So how do we get to 21? We'll start with 16. 
So we have one right here. And I would say 16 plus 4 is 20, plus 1 is 21. So it's going to be 1, no 8, no 2. So just the first bite, third bite, and the fifth bite. So that's 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So I'm going to draw out a schematic like this to be able to save in random access memory the letter V. So here is how this works. Each one of these lines represents one bit, and we want to get V. So we want one right there, zero right there, one right there, zero right there, one right there, because that would be one, two, four, eight, sixteen, one, zero, one, zero, one. We'll just multiply that. One plus zero plus four plus 16 equals 21 ABCD EFT blah, 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 21 so this sense amplifier needs to sense a 1, a 0, 1, a 0, and a 1 so how does it do that? here we go these red things are MOSFET transistors the blue things are capacitors there needs to be a 1 there needs to be a high right here and there needs to be a low right here and a high right here and a low right here and a high right here when you click the letter V there's going to be a voltage going into here and it's going to put a high value on this capacitor and it's not it's gonna put a zero on this capacitor because when, when you click the letter V, there's going to be a high coming here and a another high coming here. 